Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today I'll be teaching how to make a modern batwing cardigan. For this cardi party, we kept it casual with the stitch combo that we love, a roomy batwing, and pockets because everything is better with pockets. Speaking of, whether if you love your makes with pockets or not, We've got hundreds of modern crochet patterns, including new patterns weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 450 grams of yarn, and that's a thousand yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite animal to see at the zoo. I actually love to see two, which are the reptiles and primates. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to within the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6mm hook and start off by making an odd number chain that reaches from the top of our shoulder down to where we want the bottom of this cardigan to be. I'd like for mine to be a little bit oversized, so I'm going to start by making a chain that is 20 inches or 51 centimeters or a chain of 81. Now, we do want to make sure that we're keeping the chain as taut as possible to ensure the cardigan stays as close to the chain length as possible. If the chain's just a little too loose, it may stretch to be longer once when it's worn because it'll be a little bit heavy. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a single crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And we're going to start by inserting our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook. So bring our hook down into that chain, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. There's our first single crochet, let's do one more. Into that following chain, insert, pull through, and pull through two and continue putting one single crochet into every chain. Our row one, which was our single crochet row, is now finished. Now let's get started on a row two, which is going to be a mesh stitch row. So let's all chain one and flip our work. Now each of our mesh stitch rows is going to start with a single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. So just into that first stitch insert with one single crochet. Right after that single crochet, we're going to chain one, skip that following stitch because that chain counts as that stitch, and then single crochet into the next stitch. So insert with a single crochet, and that forms our first chain space. Let's do this again. We're going to chain one, skip one stitch into the next, single crochet for a total of two chain spaces, and again, chain one, always skip one stitch and single crochet into the next. And so now we should all have a total of one, two, three chain spaces. We're gonna continue to chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet, making our way to the end of the row. We now have one, two rows finished. This is going to be a three row repeat and our third row is going to be another mesh stitch row. So chain one and flip your work. So like I said, always getting started with a mesh stitch row, we're going to put one single crochet into that first stitch. So it should be the top of the last single crochet from our previous row with one single crochet. And now from here, we're going to basically repeat our previous row. So after that single crochet, we're going to chain one, skip one stitch, which should be the chain space from our previous row, and single crochet into the next stitch, which should be the single crochet from our previous row. And that forms our first chain space for this row. Just once more. Chain one, 
skip a stitch, which is that chain from our previous row, and then single crochet into the top of the single crochet from our previous row. And we're going to continue this to reach the end of the row. And as a quick tip, we should have the same amount of sets as our previous row. So no increases and no decreases. Our second mesh stitch row is finished and we should all have a total of one, two, three rows finished. And now it's going to be a repeat of these three rows. So getting started on our repeat of row one, which is a single crochet row, our fourth row is going to start with a chain one and flip our work. So all we're going to do is put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space till we reach the end of the row. So start by inserting your hook into the first stitch from our previous row and insert with a single crochet into that following stitch, which should be our chain space. You can just insert your hook into that entire gap with another single crochet and continue making your way down with your single crochet row. And just as a really quick tip, we should have the same amount of single crochets as chains that we made since we aren't doing any increases or decreases. We have just finished up our row one, two, three, and four. And since this is a three row repeat, we're going to do the second row in our row sequence, which is going to be another mesh stitch row. So right after our row four, chain one and flip your work. All of our mesh stitch rows are gonna be done exactly the same way. So after our chain one, we are going to insert our hook into the first stitch from our previous row with a single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, and then single crochet. Continue on with this to reach the end of the row. Now we shall have one, two, three, four, five rows finished. So let's get started on our row six and then I'll let you repeat on your own. So chain one, flip your work. And this is going to be another mesh stitch row since we have two mesh stitch rows right after another. So find the last stitch from our previous row, insert with a single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, which should be that chain space and single crochet. We're going to continue to chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet to reach the end of the row. And since this is our row six, we're going to continue on with this three row repeat. So it's a single crochet row and two mesh stitch rows right after that until we have a portion that can reach from the base of our neck over to the tip of our shoulder. And then I'll meet you back right after our second mesh stitch row so that we can work on the pocket slip. I am back and the first portion of my front panel is all finished. I have a total of 18 rows and my width is four and a half inches or 12 centimeters. And this portion that I have reaches from the base of my neck all the way to the tip of my shoulder. And the last row that we should have done should have been our second mesh stitch row. So now from here, we're going to be working on our pocket slit. So let's all start by inserting our stitch markers right where we want the pocket to be. Now we're going to be inserting our stitch markers into any one of the stitches, depending on where you want your pocket to be. So as high or as low, or as narrow or as wide as you want, making sure that we're closer to our working yarn because the working yarn is now going to be the bottom of our piece. So for those of you that want my pocket numbers, <laughs> I've inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch from the bottom. That's where my first stitch marker is. And then from there, also into my 28th stitch from the bottom. And the total width that I have in between my stitch markers is just about five inches or 13 centimeters. And this is perfect to fit my hand or a phone if you guys would like as well. And our stitch markers don't need to be in any certain amount of numbers. It's all completely up to you. But once we have our stitch markers into place, all we're going to do is make a chain from stitch marker to stitch marker. And then we're going to continue on with the following row. So from here, if you're able to go ahead and grab the tail end of the yarn that we have, and then we're just going to do a chain. But if you guys can't do that, feel free to do a chain up a one and cut and then reinsert your hook into one of your stitch marker stitches. So I've inserted my hook into one of my stitch marker stitches. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, and now we're going to make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we have in between our stitch markers that we have, making sure that we're not counting those stitch marker stitches. So for those of you that have my numbers, I have a total of 15 stitches in between. So now I'm about to make a chain 15. And now that I have my chain 15, I'm going to insert my hook into my next stitch marker stitch yarn over and pull through everything on my hook and do a chain up of one and cut. And now we can get started on our following row. Now our following row for everyone should be a single crochet row. 
So get started on this following row and I'll meet you back once we are worked into the stitch right before our stitch marker, just to show you what we're gonna do. Now I'm back with the first few single crochets that we have until we have reached our stitch marker stitch. Now from here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into that stitch marker stitch as well. So the same stitch that our chain is coming out of, because remember we only made a chain for the amount of stitches in between our stitch markers. So insert in through that stitch with one single crochet. And now that we have that single crochet, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every chain. Once we reach our following stitch marker stitch over here, make sure that you're putting one single crochet into that stitch marker stitch, and then continue on with our single crochet row. And then from here, we're going to continue on with our same row sequence. So one single crochet row and two mesh stitch rows. And all we're gonna do is continue to repeat those three rows until we now have a shoulder portion that can reach about two inches past our shoulder tip. And I'll meet you back right after a single crochet row. And when we have that, do a chain up of one and cut. I am now back with the entirety of one of my front panels finished. I have a total of 28 rows and my width is just about six and a half inches or 17 centimeters. And right after a single crochet row, I did do a chain up of one and cut. And just as a really quick tip, the single crochet rows could end along the top or the bottom. That does not matter. Mine just so happened to end along the bottom. But once we have one of these front panels all finished up, we're going to be making one more that is exactly the same. And I actually have my other front panel also all finished up. And once we have both of them finished, we're going to get started on the back panel, which is going to be pretty simple. And I already have mine finished up, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it. So our back panel is gonna be done exactly the same way as the front panel, just a little bit wider and with no pocket slit. So we're all gonna start off by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made for the front panel. If you have my numbers, I made a total chain of 81. So for my back panel, I also made a chain of 81. And then I just did my three row repeat. So a single crochet row, two mesh stitch rows, and then repeat it all the way down. Now we're going to want to do our back panel until this can reach from two inches past the tip of our shoulder across our back to two inches past the tip of our other shoulder. And we just wanna double check and make sure that the total amount of rows that we have for the back panel is more than the total amount that we have for the front panel, but making sure that we're including both of those panels. So as a really quick example, for my front panel, I had a total of 28 rows. Since we have two front panels, 28 plus 28 for me is 56. So I just wanted to make sure that my back panel was more than my 56 rows needed because once we seam our front and back panel together, we want just a little bit of space along the back panel for our neck. So since this part is super easy and super simple, I'm gonna let you guys have at it, but just to let you guys know, I will meet you guys back right after a single crochet row. So we're gonna start and end our back panel with a single crochet row, and I did a total of 67 rows. When we have that, I'll meet you back. So once when our back panel is finished, we did do a chain up of one and cut after our last row. And like I said, I had a total of 67 rows and my total width is 17 inches or 43 centimeters. We're now gonna need to single crochet across the top of our back panel and our front panels to make it easier to seam together once we seam the shoulders. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of the back panel. So the single crochet across the tops of our panels are gonna be pretty simple. It's just one single crochet into every side row. So since our hook is already into the top corner stitch, insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now let's do the first few together. Everyone's first side row should be a side single crochet row. So we're gonna insert our hook in through that top loop. And if you're like me, you have some tail ends, go ahead and place that over your hook and single crochet. Let's do the next one. Everyone's next side row should be a mesh stitch row. So insert your hook into that top loop, single crochet, and then into that following row that we have, which is a side mesh stitch row again. Insert into that top loop with just one single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna continue putting one single crochet into every side row till we don't have any more side rows left to work into. A quick tip, we should have the same amount of single crochets as total amount of rows that we have for the back panel. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you back just to talk you guys through how to do the front panel as well, even though it's gonna be done the same way. All right, so we have just single crocheted across the top of our back panel. Now we're going to single crochet across the top of our front panel, and it's going to be done exactly the same way. 
So we're going to grab one of our front panels, making sure that the pocket slit that we have is towards the bottom, and we're going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch. Then just like how we did the back panel, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side row. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, chain up one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So we have just finished up the single crochets across the top of our fronts and back panel, and now we're going to seam the shoulders. So let's all make sure that we're placing our front panel on top of our back panel, making sure that the pocket slit is on the correct side. So let me just show you guys what I'm talking about. So as an example, our pocket slits should be along the bottom, which is what we have right here. But we do wanna make sure that we have the inside of the front panel along the inside, and then the outside of our front panels along the outside. So just double check and make sure that we have the same amount of rows along the inside versus on the other side of the pocket. Because if we accidentally seam it the other way, then as you guys can see, depending on how many rows you guys can have, this side has more room for the pocket to be closer to the inside, and this side does not because this is actually supposed to be my shoulder. But once we have everything flipped the correct side, we are now going to seam our shoulders, so let's all insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're now going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do a single crochet seam, making sure that we're single crocheting in through both the front and the back panel at the same time. So to get this first one started, we're gonna insert our hook into that following stitch into the front panel and also into that following stitch into the back panel and if you have some tail ends, go ahead and place that over your hook so you don't need to weave those in later. And then we're going to single crochet around everything. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch, into the front panel, insert your hook. Into the next stitch, into the back panel, insert your hook. And single crochet. And that's pretty much it. We're going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the front panel. When we don't, do a chain up one and cut and then repeat on the other side. Now that our shoulder seams are all seamed up, we're ready to seam the sides. So first things first, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our work is slipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we have for the shoulders is now along the outside. And then we're going to need to insert our stitch marker the width that we'd like for our bat wing sleeve to start as. Now I would suggest to first insert your stitch marker into a stitch that's nearest to your waist, since we do want this to be a bat wing sleeve, and it does need to be an odd number as well. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 45th stitch from the top, and this is just about 11 and a half inches or 29 centimeters, and it's within both the front and the back panel. Now from here, we're going to be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now, just like how we did the seam for the side panel, we're going to be doing a single crochet seam. So now that our hook is in through both the front and back panel, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through everything, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now, since we already know how to do the seam, let's just do the first one. We're all gonna start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and insert your hook. Next, we're gonna find that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook in through there, and I am going to weave in my tail ends as I go, and I'm going to single crochet around everything. And we're gonna to continue to do this until we reach our stitch marker, do a chain up one and cut once when we do. Then we're gonna repeat everything we just did here on the other side. And now that everything is all seamed together, let's get started on our bat wing sleeve. So first things first, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning all of the seams that we have are now along the inside. And we wanna make sure that our hook is into the stitch nearest to the side seam. So the stitch that is available or the stitch that has a stitch marker in it. What we're gonna do from here is insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're gonna start with a single crochet seam into the same stitch that our chain one is in. That chain one does not count as a stitch. We're gonna insert our hook into that same stitch with just one single crochet. And this first row and our second row is going to be a mesh stitch row. So after that single crochet, we're going to chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. And again, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next. And we're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way up until we reach our shoulder seam. So we are just about halfway finished with our row one for our sleeve. We have reached our shoulder seam. And just as a quick tip, the last single crochet that we did should have been the stitch right before our shoulder seam, since we had an odd number of stitches along both sides of our sleeve. 
And from here, we're going to continue to do our mesh stitch. But right after this last single crochet along this side of our shoulder seam, we are not going to chain one and skip a stitch to work into that following stitch on the other side of our shoulder seam. All we're going to do is find that first stitch on the other side and insert your hook in through there with just one single crochet. And if you would like, go ahead and insert your stitch markers into those two middle stitches that we have just so we know that we're going to be repeating this throughout the entirety of our sleeve. But now that we have our first single crochet along this side of our shoulder seam, we're going to continue on with our mesh stitch. So chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet into the next. And we're going to continue this making our way all the way back down towards the seam and as a really quick tip we should have the same amount of sets along both sides of our shoulder seam. So we are pretty much finished with our first row for our sleeve we just need to connect it. The last single crochet that we did for this side of our sleeve ends into that stitch with our stitch marker in it or that available stitch that's right next to our seam. And from here we're going to slip stitch into that chain space that we made when we started this row. So insert your hook into that chain space, yarn over, pull through everything, and we are going to be maintaining the same row sequence as the body. So since we just did one mesh stitch row, we're going to be doing another mesh stitch row. So chain one, we are going to flip our work and then do our mesh stitch all the way around. So just to get started on this row, we're going to single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of that single crochet. Now, since we're working in the rounds as a really quick tip, it'll actually look like we have an extra stitch right after that last single crochet. That's the slip stitch that we made that connects our row, and that doesn't count as a stitch. So we want to make sure that we're working into that first single crochet, and insert with one single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, which should be our chain space, single crochet into the next, and continue this until we reach our stitch marker. Alright, so we've made our way all the way up with our second mesh stitch row, and we're now at the middle. So I just want to make sure that we are taking out our stitch marker from our previous row since my single crochet that I just did was worked into that stitch marker stitch and I'm going to insert my stitch marker into the top of that stitch so we know where our two middle stitches are and we're going to be doing the same thing into that following stitch which is the next stitch on the other side of our shoulder seam. So right after this middle stitch marker single crochet we are not going to chain one and just work directly into that following stitch or our stitch marker stitch with one single crochet and then insert your stitch marker back into that stitch so we know where our two middle stitches are. And from here, now we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet until we reach the end of the row. So we just did our two mesh stitch rows. Now we're going to get started on our single crochet row, so chain one and flip your work. So into the beginning and end of every single crochet row, we're going to be doing a decrease of three single crochets. So to do the first one, we're going to find that last stitch from our previous row, which is the top of that single crochet, insert your hook, pull through, insert your hook into that following stitch, which should be our chain space, pull through, and then into that following stitch, which is that next single crochet, pull through. Once we have those four loops, we're going to yarn over, pull through all four, and then that's it. From here, we're going to continue to put one single crochet into every chain space and stitch, making our way all the way up and over, making sure that once we reach our two middle stitches, we're inserting our stitch markers into the tops of those stitches so that we don't lose our place. I'll meet you back when we have just three stitches left right next to our seam. So our single crochet row is nearly finished. We should all have three stitches left, and those three stitches should be a single crochet, a chain space, and a single crochet. And we're going to end off all of our single crochet rows with a decrease of three the same way that we started our single crochet row. So start by inserting your hook into that following stitch which should be the top of our third to last stitch or our single crochet. Let's not insert our hook through too many loops, pull through. Also into that second to last which should be our chain space, pull through and then also into that last which is a single crochet, pull through when we have all four yarn over, pull through all four. And now we're going to slip stitch into that chain space that we made when we started this row. And now that our single crochet row is finished up, we're going to chain one and flip your work. Now for our sleeve, we should all have one, two, three rows finished. Now it's going to be a repeat of our three rows. So two mesh stitch rows, 
and then a single crochet row that starts and ends with a decrease of three single crochets. I'm just going to get started on the following mesh stitch row with you to make sure that we're inserting our stitch markers into the two middle stitches when we get there. And then we're gonna continue this until we get the full length of our sleeve. So once when we flipped our work, let's start with a single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And now that my work is flipped, I'm gonna single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. And that last stitch should be the top of that decrease of three single crochets, making sure we're not working into that stitch that we made when we did our slip stitch. So into the top of that decrease of three singles, we're going to single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet. And I'll meet you back once we're at our middle stitches. So I've made our mesh stitch row all the way up and we should all have one stitch left right before our first middle stitch. So chain one, skip that stitch and then into the following stitch, which should be our first middle stitch a single crochet, and don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the top of that stitch. And then into our next middle stitch, we are not gonna do a chain one, just insert with a single crochet, making sure that we're inserting our stitch marker back into the top of that stitch. Then we're gonna chain one and continue to do our mesh stitch to reach the end of the row. Once we do, slip stitch into that chain space, chain one, flip our work, and then do our mesh stitch row that is exactly like this one. Then right after that, we're going to have a single crochet row that starts and ends with a decrease of three single crochets. And we're just gonna continue to repeat those three rows until we are ready to get started on the cuff for our sleeve. Now, depending on how wide your armhole is for your sleeve, your sleeve may become a little bit tighter further up your arm than you would like for the cuff to be. And if that's the case, you're just gonna continue to do our two mesh stitch rows plus a single crochet row, but now without any increases or decreases until you are ready to get started on your cuff. Either way, I'll meet you back. All right, so the entirety of my sleeve is all finished. Now I have a total of 60 rows, but I did stop doing my decreases right after my 41st row because this is just as small as I wanted my sleeve to get. And then from there, I just continued on with two mesh stitch rows and a single crochet row, but now without any increases or decreases until I got the length of the sleeve that I want. My total length is 15 and a half inches or 40 centimeters. And now from here, we're gonna get started on our cuff. So first things first, let's all start by making a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. And I'd like for mine to be just about three inches or eight centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain 15. Now that we have our chain, we're gonna get started on our first row, which is a slip stitch row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one does not count as a stitch. That's our turning chain. And now we're going to slip stitch all the way down. So start by inserting your hook into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. Then we're gonna yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. There's my first slip stitch, let's do this again. Into that next stitch, insert, gently pull through everything, and again into that next chain, insert and pull through everything. We're gonna continue to put one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row can be a little too tight to work into. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're going to need to connect it into the base. So start by finding that next stitch into the base. We're going to insert our hook, yarn over it, and pull through everything on our hook. Now that slip stitch does not count as a stitch. We just need to connect it into the base. And we do need to work our way up to the following row as well. So into that next stitch into the base, insert with another slip stitch, flip our work, and now we're gonna be doing back loop slip stitches. So let's all start by finding the last stitch from our previous row, making sure we're not working in through those two slip stitches into the base, and we're gonna insert our hook in through that back loop. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do that again into that next stitch, insert into that back loop, gently pull through everything, and again into that next stitch's back loop, pull through everything. And continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch at the end of the row. We're gonna chain one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, making sure that we meet back right at the base. Now we have our rows one, two, three, nearly finished. Now we're going to connect our row three into the base. So connecting our row three or any odd number row, we're gonna find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there to connect this row. Then to slip stitch into our following stitch, insert your hook into that next stitch into the base. That also doesn't count as a stitch. Flip our work. And now we're gonna continue putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and then that's it. Continue on with our two previous rows, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. 
and then I'll meet you back when we don't have any more stitches left so we can seam everything together. So I am back and we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows and now we're gonna seam it all together. So let's all make sure the work is slipped right side out, right side up, and then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Next, we're going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. And now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So getting this started, we're gonna find that first stitch into the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. We're gonna enter into that next stitch into the back panel and only in through that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop and pull through all three. And we're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up one and cut and then just repeat everything we did here on the other side. I am back and I have just finished up both of my sleeves and now we're gonna get started on the front band. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is slipped right side out and right side up. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of our front panel. We are then going to insert our yarn onto our hook pull through, and we're gonna start by making chain the length that we'd like for our front band to be, keeping in mind that this is going to be within the front panel and along our back as well, and back over to this corner of the front panel. I'd like for mine to be just about an inch and a half or three centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain six. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do our first row, which is a single crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain one, and into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a single crochet. So insert, pull through, pull through two, and continue putting one single crochet into every chain. And now that we have our row one all finished up, we're going to need to connect it into the base. And the connection is actually gonna be done the same way that we connected our cuff. So just to do the first one together, we're gonna to find that first stitch into the front panel and insert our hook in through there, yarn over and pull through everything with a slip stitch. And this slip stitch does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. And then we're going to need to work our way up to the following row. So into that next available stitch into the base, insert your hook with another slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, pull through everything. And that slip stitch also does not count as a stitch. We just needed to work our way up to the following row and we're gonna flip our work. We are now gonna be doing front post single crochets. So let's all start by finding the first body of that last single crochet that we did from our previous row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna be inserting my hook into the gap to the right of that single crochet and bring our hook completely through our piece. And then we're going to bring our hook up through the gap on the left side of that same single crochet. So just bring it underneath the body of that single crochet. And then we're gonna single crochet per usual. So pull through, pull through two. And that's it, let's do this again. Into that next stitch, we're gonna insert our hook into that gap underneath our stitch and bring our hook through the other side. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, and again, into that following gap, insert your hook, bring your hook through the other side, pull through, pull through two. And we're gonna continue to do our front post single crochets until we have the same amount of front post single crochets as chains that we made when we started the section. All right, so I'm back and my row two is nearly complete, just to make sure that we're all on the right track. I did a chain six to start off this section, so I should now have a total of six front post single crochets. So to count that together, here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And as you can tell, if we left the edges like this, it would be a little jagged or uneven. So just to even out the row, we're gonna single crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. So just insert your hook, pull through, pull through two with a regular single crochet, and that does not count as a stitch, that's just to close off the row. Now let's get started on our row three or our following odd number row. So we're gonna chain one and flip our work. And from here, it's going to be a repeat of our front post single crochets. So just to do the first one, we're gonna find that last front post single crochet from our previous row, making sure that we're not looking at the last single crochet from our previous row, because that's just the edge. We're gonna insert a hook in through that gap, underneath the body of that single crochet with a front post single crochet, and again, into that gap, underneath that following single crochet through the other side with a front post single crochet. And we're gonna continue to do this until we reach the base. 
All right, so I'm back and I am nearly finished with my row three. Just to double check, we all should have the same amount of stitches as chains that we made when we started this section. I made a chain six, so I should have a total of six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And since we're along the base, after that last front post single crochet, we're just gonna connect it into the base. So into that next available stitch, go ahead and insert your hook in through there. Yarn over and pull through everything with a slip stitch. And that is going to be how we connect every odd number row. And to work our way up to the following row or any even number row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. And flip your work and repeat. So from here, we're gonna continue to do our two front post single crochet rows that we just did with no increases and no decreases, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we just did, making our way all the way up and around. So all the way up our front panel, across our back, and back down to the other corner of our front panel. And when we have that, do a chain up a one and cut. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is our pockets. So first things first, we're going to be grabbing our same category four yarn, our same six millimeter hook, and we're all gonna start by making a chain for the same amount of chains that we made when we did our pocket slit. So for those of you that have my numbers, I had a total of 15 chains for my pocket slit, so I will now be making another chain of 15. And now that we have our chain, we're gonna get started on our first row, which is going to be a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch, we just need it for the height. And now we're gonna half double crochet into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook. So go ahead and insert, pull through, pull through all three and continue putting one half double crochet into every chain. And now that our first half double crochet row is finished, we're gonna continue on with our half double crochet rows until we get a solid pocket portion. So from here, at the end of the row, all we're gonna do is chain two, flip our work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch. And we just wanna make sure that our half double crochet rows isn't exceeding the measurement that we have from the pocket to the inner panel. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I already have one pocket panel all finished up. So just to show you guys, as you guys can see, we have some half double crochet rows, and then it also has a slant along the top. Now we want the slant along the top so that once when we seam it onto the panel, the longer side is along the top so that the pocket can slant downwards just a little bit so whatever we put in our pockets doesn't slip back out. But we'll get to that once when we get there. Now I just wanted to meet you guys back to make sure that we were reminded that for the half double crochet rows that we're doing, it's not too long because we don't want it to be too long from our pocket slit over to the inner edge of our front panel. Otherwise the pocket will stick out from the front panel. We just wanna make sure that it's the right size. So go ahead and get yours all finished up. I'll be doing a total of 11 half double crochet rows and then I'll meet you back so that we can do the slant together. All right, so I'm back with the main portion of my pocket. Like I said, I had a total of 11 rows and this is just about four and a half inches or 12 centimeters. And now we're gonna start working on our slant. Now the numbers for our slant are gonna be a little bit different for everyone, but it's gonna be the same idea. So all we're gonna do to get the slant that we want is we're gonna start our following row with single crochets. Once we reach somewhere around the middle, half double crochets and then close off the row with double crochets, just to make sure that one side is shorter than the other. Now you guys are going to figure out how many singles, how many half doubles, and how many double crochets you're gonna do, depending on how many stitches you guys have. But for those of you that have 15 like me, I'm gonna be doing five single, five half double, and five double crochets. So let's just get that started. Let's all start with a chain one and flip our work. Like I said, I'm gonna start with five single crochets. Now that my single crochets are finished, we're now going to be doing half double crochets, so yarn over, insert into that following stitch, pull through, pull through three, and again, we're gonna yarn over into that next stitch, pull through, pull through three. And I'll do this until I have a total of five. And now to close off this slant row, we're gonna be putting one double crochet into every stitch till we reach the end of the row. So to do a double crochet, we're gonna yarn over, insert our hook into that following stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and again, yarn over, into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two, pull through two and put one double crochet into the rest of our stitches. Now, please remember the amount of singles, half doubles, and double crochets that we have because we're going to be doing two more rows, so a total of three of these slant rows to make sure that we get a decent slant. So since we have just finished up our first row, we're along the double crochet end. Getting started on the following row, we're all going to chain three and flip our work. 
And now since we're along the top end, we're going to be putting one double crochet into every stitch for the same amount of double crochets that we did for our previous row. So for me, five double crochets. Now right after our double crochets, we're going to be doing our half double crochets for the same amount of half double crochets that we did for our previous row. So for me, five half doubles. And now that my half doubles are finished, we're now going to put one single crochet into the rest of the stitches into this row. So it should be the same amount of single crochets as our previous row. And now this is our second slant row finished. We're going to be doing one more slant row and that's going to be done the same way that we did the first one. So since we're along the short end, we're going to chain one and flip our work. And since this is exactly like the first slant row that we did, I'm going to be having five singles, five half doubles, and five double crochets. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut. Then we're going to be making one more pocket panel. But once we finish up the second pocket panel, do not do a chain up one and cut because we're going to just seam both of our pocket panels together. So I am back with my three slant rows. I did do a chain up one and cut after my first one. And I did not do a chain up one and cut after my second one because now we're going to need to seam the edges of our pockets together. So since we didn't do a chain up one and cut after the last one, we're now going to be inserting our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And now that our hook is in through the top corner stitch, we're going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Now, since we should be working into the tall ends of our slant rows, we should have some side double crochets to work into. So we're all going to start by putting two single crochets into every side double crochet row. So we should have three of those. So let's do that together. Now, this is my first side double crochet within my front panel. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop. And then I'm going to find my following side double crochet within the back panel and insert into that top loop. And if you're like me, you may have a tail end. So place that over your hook and single crochet around everything. That's how we weave in our tail ends as we go. So let's do the next single crochet. And the next single crochet should be into the same side row within the front and back panel because we're putting two into every side double crochet. So into that same top loop within the front panel, same top loop within the back panel. It should be a little bit easier because they're already gathered. And we're going to single crochet. We're going to continue to put two single crochets into every side double crochet row, making sure we're working into both the front and the back panel until we reach our first side half double crochet row. We've just put two single crochets into every side double crochet. And now working down towards the bottom corner, we're going to alternate between one to two single crochets into every side half double crochet row, making sure we're still working into both the front and back panel. So let's all start by finding our first side half double crochet row. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop within the front panel, insert again into that top loop within the back panel, and single crochet. And to do the next one, this is my following side row within the front panel, my following side row within the back panel, and we're now going to insert into there with two single crochets. So there is one, and then into that same top loop with a second. And we're going to continue this until we reach the bottom corner, so let's just do one more set. This is my following side row into the front panel, side row into the back panel, with one single crochet. And then this is my following side row, so into that top loop in the front, into that top loop within the back, with two single crochets. And I'll meet you back at the bottom corner. And now that we've made our way all the way down to the bottom corner, once we're at the corner, all we're going to do is chain one, and then we're going to do a single crochet seam. So we're going to single crochet across the bottom, putting one single crochet into every stitch, making sure we're working into both the front and back panel at the same time. And then when it comes to working our way up the side of our pocket again, we have a bunch of side half double crochet rows. So just like how we did for this first side, alternate between one to two single crochets into every side half double crochet row. And then we should have three single crochet rows along the top. So just put one single crochet into each of those side rows, working into both the front and back panel again. When we have that, do a chain up of one and cut. I am back and I've just finished up seaming my pocket together. And now we're going to seam it onto our cardigan. So first things first, let's make sure that our work is slipped right side out and right side up. And we're going to start working on the front seam that we have, the one that's closest to the inner edge of our front panel. So let's place our pocket that we have, making sure that the long end is along the top underneath our front panel. So now that our pocket is underneath our front panel, what we're going to do is find that top corner stitch within the front panel, making sure that we're only finding the top pocket panel. We're going to leave that 
bottom pocket panel alone so that we can seam that in later. If we do everything at the same time, then we're actually going to seam up the pocket completely. So what we're gonna do from here is take our same hook, insert it into the corner stitch of the front pocket panel, and then into the top stitch within our pocket slit, and then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. We are then going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam. So into the front panel, which is our pocket panel, we're going to insert our hook into that first stitches front loop. And then into our back panel, which is our pocket slit within the cardigan, we're gonna find that back loop and insert your hook. And when we have those three loops, yarn over, pull through all three. Let's do that again. Into the next stitch, into the front panel, insert only into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop, and pull through all three. And we're going to continue this until we don't have any more stitches left. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. So now that one portion of our pocket is connected, we're now going to need to connect the bottom half. So to do this one, we're going to flip our work wrong side out. So now that my work is flipped wrong side out, I flip my cardigan on its side so that we can do our regular single crochet seam between our pocket panel and our front panel. So we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of our pocket panel, and then also into the corner stitch of our pocket slit, making sure that the ribbing that we have is going to be along the inside. So we're gonna pinch it together and insert our hook. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook. So this is gonna be the same way that we seam the sides and the shoulders. So let's get this started. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through everything and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna find that first stitch into the front panel and insert. Find the first stitch into the back panel and insert. And then we're going to single crochet everything together. Let's do just one more. Into that next stitch into the front, next stitch into the back, and single crochet. And we're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're going to repeat everything on the other side. So now that we have both of our pockets all finished up, the last thing we're going to have to do is single crochet along the bottom just to clean it up. So let's all start by inserting our six millimeter hook into this bottom corner stitch and insert your yarn onto your hook. From there, we're going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now we should have a handful of stitches to work into and that should be the bottom of our front band. So let's all start by putting one single crochet into every stitch. And now that we put one single crochet into every stitch along the bottom of our front band, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row all the way around until we reach this corner over here. So just to find the first one, we're gonna find this first side row right here, insert into that top loop with just one single crochet, and that's it. Just one single crochet goes into every side row. And once we made our way over to the other corner that we have, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back and our single crochet row is all finished up. We did do a chain up one and cut and we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all next one. Bye.